Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. And even if you're not new here, thank you for joining us for some more electric news. Over here on the Out of Spec podcast, we talk about all things EV, which you probably know that. It has been a while since I gave y'all a hefty update on Nevi. What's going on with Nevi? Which states have funding? What sites are upcoming? We did cover the first Nevi site to go live. So let's give you an update. How many sites have gone up since Nevi funding has been awarded? What are the new awards? Let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Okay, so all the details about Nevi. Back, like I said, in November, gave you an update on Nevi, how it's going. Essentially, no sites were live, but by December, we were able to bring you the news of the first Nevi-funded site to go live, and that's west of Columbus, Ohio. This site was one of the GM EVgo Pilot Flying J Travel Centers charging stations, that joint partnership between those three companies to put in charging stations across the nation. And if you need a reminder on what Nevi is, it is the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program. It's a federal initiative in the United States, of course, to build more EV chargers on traveling corridors. This is a $5 billion initiative to deploy fast charging to more than 79,000 miles of designated alternative fuel corridors. Before we look into the NEVI progress so far, it is important to note what is an alternative fuel corridor. I had some comments on a recent video that was basically asking, why are chargers put along this kind of highway and not this kind of highway, that kind of freeway, not this kind of interstate, blah, blah, blah. But there is actually a, there are designated alternative fuel corridors. So here's what I found out. The U.S. Department of Transportation Federal Highway Administration designates a national network of electric vehicle charging and hydrogen, propane, and natural gas fueling infrastructure along national highway system corridors. To designate these alternative fuel corridors, as we call them, the Federal Highway Administration solicits nominations from the state and local officials at the state and local level, as well as working with other federal officials and stakeholders to, in the industry to make these des designations. So it's basically decided on through this kind of nomination process. So if you have an issue, maybe look into your state, look into who might be making those decisions and better understand that if you're curious. That's as much as I'm going to go into that. So we are happy to see that the first Nevi site that we covered, we actually spoke to the Ohio team that put in that first site. Uh, so that's cool. I will link that episode in the show notes, but this site is doing well. It is sitting at the top score on PlugShare that a site can get, which is a 10. So that's really pretty cool. And if you're on YouTube, I am bringing these up on PlugShare as we go along so you can see exactly what's happening. So as you can see here, it's a Pilot Flying J Center. It has a 10 out of 10 on PlugShare, like I said, which is great. And one thing to note is that the notes basically say people are having successful charges here. But at Pilot Flying J stations, people typically note how expensive it is. It is important to be aware that EVgo does not set these prices. Pilot Flying J company sets the pricing at these chargers. They technically own the hardware, EVgo services, and maintains them. So now you know who to take that up with. Additionally, it's important to note that these are technically on the EVgo network, but there are some stipulations. If you're going to go on a road trip and you're going to get an EVgo membership specifically because you know you're going to pass through a lot of pilot or Flying J locations with these chargers, the membership does not apply. So I reached out to EVgo specifically to comment on this. So they reiterated, pilot company sets prices at each station and pricing will vary by state. Payments at these chargers can be made through the EVgo app or on-site at the charging stall. 
Existing EVgo customers can locate pilot charging stations, initiate a charge, and pay for sessions through their EVgo account. However, EVgo subscription plan rates will not apply at pilot and flying J charging stations. Good to know. GM drivers can also locate Pilot Flying J stations, initiate a charge, and pay for sessions through their My Brand app, My Chevy, whatever it is. Okay. That's just a good thing to note because I've been seeing those kind of comments on Pilot Flying J, not only plug shares, but conversations around this as well. I know someone who actually got the EVgo membership and it didn't pay off. They thought they were going to be able to take advantage of it at these stations. I think that is important to note and perhaps is not made clear enough. Anyways, this site in Ohio does seem to be doing well, functioning well, so that is great. Love to see it. A wide variety of vehicles have successfully charged here, and there are overall good reviews. Great to see. Today, we're going to look at the progress of the NEVI initiative beyond this, what has come since Ohio, and we'll look at all the charger installs since last time. We'll also go through the plug share feedback a little bit to see if the install is fitting people's needs, because that's important too. We don't just want any old site. The next one we're going to look at is, I'll zoom out from there, is in New York. So this New York site went live December 15th, 2023. This one is in Kingston, New York at a Bank of America, and it was awarded to Evolve New York. There are four 350 kilowatt Electrify America BTC chargers. It's the the new BTC hardware, and there are great reviews on PlugShare as well. It's placed at a Bank of America location, like I said, but reviewers are saying that it is a good location close to Interstate 87, I-87, There are many users, and it seems to be a good trend for the New York EV drivers. Love to see it as well. Next, we have Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, this site went live on January 23rd, 2024. You can see a lot of snow in the pictures. And yeah, I'm sure it was cold in January in Pennsylvania. So we got some northern states. I would say Ohio is way more north, Pennsylvania, and New York. Interesting. So if we look here, it is an EV Go GM Pilot Flying J Travel Center site as well. There are two, If we and we can look at the photos here. So again, if you're tuning in on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. And if not, I will describe it. There are two of these Delta 350 kilowatt chargers that have the shared charging. So two plugs, you can charge two vehicles at a time and it will, you know, have that dynamic charging. So whoever needs whatever kind of charge, it'll give you that. So four stalls, two dispensers. Another site with good feedback from users. It has a 10 uh, on the plug share score. Of course, some people are like, well, what does that really mean? That's why it's always important to see how recently someone charged, what they were charging, what they got. They might note that it was derated. Who knows? I always read the comments on PlugShare is what I've learned. So they also say, especially regarding the amenities, this is a great site. Some complaints again on price, but like I said, this is not set by EVgo. It's set by Pilot. So it is interesting. We're seeing this trend where it's a bit expensive at Pilot Flying J. I do think it's nice to have these at travel centers because there's always someone around. You can always go inside somewhere. And also, hopefully, since there's always someone around, There's always someone to take a look at the chargers and see if there's a problem, see if there's trash out there, see if any of the lights are out. Okay. Another one we're looking at, we're going tropical to Hawaii, Maui specifically. This happened on February 28th, 2024, and it was awarded to EV Connect for 150 kilowatt chargers, tritium chargers, and it also has a decent... Well, it actually doesn't have the best score, 7.4. I don't know. I guess that's passing, but not great. There are some complaints about the credit card reader and app, and some say they are the best chargers in Maui. So not sure about the selection in Maui, actually. So would love to know if there is anyone in Hawaii or Maui that has some insight into this. Yeah, someone says terrible, cannot charge. And then someone says seamless. It, It all depends on the day, doesn't it? Okay, in Maine, on April 2nd of 2024, we see the Rockland Plaza charger station go up. And this is actually the one that features Tesla superchargers. So there are eight 250 kilowatt, 500 volt maximum 
Tesla supercharging hardware with the Tesla Magic Docks. This means that you can charge not only with the J3400 standard or the, the Tesla connector, but also CCS. This is great. Anyone can charge there. If you're looking at the photos, we can see Teslas, we can see Ionics and Kias and okay, there's a there's a RAM, but that's not charging there. So some also do question if Tesla really should have gotten Nevi funding for this site at all. You might have heard some rumblings about this. So the requirements for Nevi funded EV charging sites do say that there's a requirement that each DC fast charging port support output voltages between 250 volts DC and 920 volts DC. But as we know, Tesla chargers only support up to 500 volts on their V3 cabinets, which means that they don't support the entire voltage range stated in the NEVI requirements. So they fall within the range, but not the whole range. So the V3 cabinets is what Tesla uses in all of today's installations. What this means for users is that high voltage cars may not get the minimum required 150 kilowatt on these chargers. So it's not just semantics, it's actually our people who are coming here to charge getting what they should be getting. A plug share user actually did uh, ask about this as well. He said, can someone please test an 800 volt car here to see if the station meets Nevi 920 volt requirement? Okay, there is another group activity, of course, going on. No surprise in the EV world. All in all, this site has generally gotten good feedback. Aside from an Ionic 5 user that could not get his charge car to charge there. So we've seen quite a few of these interoperability issue with Tesla superchargers and CCS vehicles. It's new. The Magic Docs is new. Any non-Tesla EV being on the Tesla supercharger network is new. There are going to be interoperability issues and seeing how quickly they are tested, bugged, fixed, resolved so that these don't happen is still to be seen. The Ionic 5 is a high voltage car and would only have gotten a maximum of, of like 100 kilowatt charging on these chargers anyway due to Tesla's low charger voltage. In case there are many fast charging vehicles at the location at the same time, you might sl see slower charging. So I think that's something important to note due to the fact that there are more and more EVs that are going to be coming on to the Tesla supercharger network. We see a Rivian charging here. Okay, moving on. Vermont, April 23rd, 2023. Another, well, yeah, another northern state. This is interesting. I, I wonder if, why there's a trend there. Besides Hawaii, I know <laughs> Maui is not it. So this was awarded to Norwich EV, and there are four ABB chargers. They are the Terra 184 chargers with 180 kilowatt max and dynamic sharing capabilities. They, of course, are, well, that's if that's equipped. I'm not sure they are equipped on these chargers exactly, because it looks like there's only one cable, right? This is one of the 15 planned NEVI sites in Vermont by the end of this year. So they've got one so far, I guess. 14 more to go. I want to also note that there has been more funding awarded to different states in America since we last had the update. Every state put in their proposals for NEVI and the proposals for funding. And then they have conditional awarding and surefire awarding. So. Since the last update, they have given us a kind of quarter one 2024 update that came out mid-February. So the states that have new public conditional NEVI awards are Utah, looks like $36.3 in total funding over the NEVI program. Texas, $407.7 in total funding over the under the NEVI program. Rhode Island, $22.9 of total funding under the NEVI program. Kansas, 39.5 million, New Mexico, 38.4 million dollars is what I'm talking about. And Tennessee, 88 million, love to hear that. And Michigan, 110.1 million dollars in total funding under the NEVI program. Keep an eye out. There are a lot of new sites, not a ton though, just a handful. So we'll be sure to keep updating on these. Which type of sites do you want to see more of? Is there a specific kind of hardware that you have? an easy time with. I know that Kim Power North America is having their grand opening tomorrow. I'm actually going to it in North Carolina. Do we want to see more of that hardware? I know we've talked about it on the channel. They've had a great time over in the Scandinavian countries and in Europe with that hardware. 
What do you usually have a good experience with? Do you have a trusty hardware that you love to use? Do you follow, follow Nevi progress in your state? Love to know that as well. Where are you actually? Have you been to any of these sites? And then of course, what do you think about Tesla's interpretation of the Nevi requirements? It's a little bit interesting because it's kind of like when you're arguing law and you interpret the law to mean certain things and you can argue them in court. Of course, when I think when it comes to funding like this, we need to be specific and it needs to be equitable so that anyone who drives up can get the kind of charge that not necessarily that they deserve, but the kind of, kind of charge that their car can take so that they can get the most energy, carry on their day, and charge their EV to the best of their ability. Okay, that is a brief update on the Nevi sites that have gone live in the United States. Let me know if you've been there. Let me know what you'd like to hear next from us. Share this out if you thought it was interesting. Like, subscribe, and of course, continue the discussion in the comments. I'll see you next time on the next episode of the Out of Spec Podcast. Bye, y'all. Have a great rest of your day.